good morning, welcome to Wine Champ TV. As ever, I'm joined by my um, business partner, Boo Murphy, and uh, our good friend, Kate Spicer. Today, we are trying some Georgian wines. Uh, Georgia being a very exciting wine region. Um, we, we've got a selection of interesting bottles here we're going to try. The most important thing, of course, is in Georgia, um, a corkscrew such as this, which is about £2.99, is considerably more expensive than most of the wines. And obviously, you don't necessarily have access to such a um, high technologically advanced implement. So, we are going to show you how you can enjoy Georgian wines uh, in the Georgian way, with a number of uh, methods of opening the bottles which don't require such a implement. So, Kate, perhaps you would demonstrate the best way of uh, drinking uh, the wonderful Mzvani grape um, grown in the Kakheti region. So how did you pronounce that? The Sarah again? Mzvani. Yeah, yeah. Nice 12.5 percent, delicious, as we'll see, sort of Viognier meets Sauvignon in terms of the aromatics. When you are lacking, please do go on. Yeah, when when you're yeah, here you go. We just use a spoon. We just kind of really. This is we've all done this as a student. Yeah, exactly. uh, Every now and then, it's. Ram it down. Come on, Kate. Don't be shy. It's quite hard. Do you want a towel or something? Uh, the spoon is help. dirty. No, there's nothing much cleaning this office, generally speaking. This is it, you know, it's, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to wipe this oh, well done. Oh, my Nailed Chloe it. top! <laughs> Brilliant. My Chloe top! Oh, F. Fuck. Star, star, star. Should we get... Star. No, <laughs> this is why. You. Yeah, perfect. But Do not wear them. designer clothing in the colour of white when using the uh, fail-safe spoon option, because yeah. it is also a fail-safe stain-your-clothes option. But now you need to keep the spoon in the bottle, um, oops, and, uh, and now one can pour with impunity, thusly. Okay. We, we, can, we can enjoy a glass of this particularly fine... Uh, it's a shame we weren't opening the red, I suppose. Yeah, let's just remove oh, the... Oh, my God. Just that you. No. <laughs> fine. So, um, anyway. Mm. Mm. As I said, like kind of for me, it's that Viognier peachiness with some of the. Um... Yeah, um, rather considerately, they do tell us that it's white wine on the front as well, actually, which sometimes can be quite rewarding. Well, it, it's more sort of yellowy orange colour, but. Mm. <laughs> Guys. Delicious. Okay, drink wine. It, trust me, you'll, you'll get over the. Oh, spoon. hang on. Bananas. It's, it's oh no, it smells <laughs> like um, de uh, washing powder, like uh, uh, very, very or aerial, non biological. Yeah. No, yeah, but, but I think it's wrong. Hang on, it's Viognier, isn't it? It smells like Viognier. Yeah, bit banana -y. Yeah, let's, let's put the bottle back, by the way. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's got a best before date on it. 1706-09. Oh. No, maybe that's um when it was bottled, um, one hopes. Um, no, it's actually very, very good. And um, hard to get hold of in this country, but uh, excellent suppliers um, who are... <laughs> From Georgia. I mean, I can't even... No, I think, I think it's important right, to go to Georgia to buy these wines, but... Yeah, mm. yeah. But, um, no, it's very nice. Um, it's, it's fresh, aromatic, peachy, with some Sauvignon freshness. But I'm thinking to myself, Tom, if I were out and about a date late at night, I couldn't find a spoon to open my wine. I'm a bit screwed. All I'm doing, uh, you know, I've got my sword sitting around, so oh, perhaps I could use that. Uh, well, you could, yes. Uh, you could, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, our next effort is... Um, the, the, you know, if, if, for example, the problem is often I find I've only got one arm, and uh, that makes what are you doing with the other one? Uh -huh, no, no, right, right now this one is someone else's, but, but you know it, it's problematic, and you know, um, Boo will be demonstrating how you open a bottle with only one arm later, and um, I'm going to show you if you're too weak to remove the cork from a bottle of champagne, then uh, of course the obvious uh, method is is the old tried and trusted uh, sabrage method. When I briefly flirted with the army, rather well, than someone in the army, um, uh, there was a great game in the cavalry where you used to get a bottle of champagne and hammer it on the floor uh, three times as hard as you could and pass it on to the next person. And the game ended when it exploded over someone and then they had to uh, buy a new, another bottle of champagne. This continued until your oh. mess bill oh, ran out. Oh. Look out, look out. Oh, it's shit, is that coming out? Oh no. That should be staying in. Tom, yeah. that sounds like a sort of um, slightly more sophisticated version of Sticky Bicky that you were playing at Sandhurst. <laughs> it does. Okay, uh, Is that like Carl on a Biscuit? Yeah. <laughs> you see, that, that cork... It's going to just pop itself Ooh. out any second. Oh, yeah. look! Got it, okay, fine. I can notice how to open uh, a cork that is with Georgian, telekinesis. That's Georgian champagne, isn't it? This is, this is 
Chalks and Champagne from three marvellous grape varieties, of which I'm a particular personal fan, which are <laughs> Tzika, Chinabuli, and Goruli, and Mutsuven, which I think was the same stuff that's as in the, the white. That's your standard, uh, yeah. Yeah. comes in all Georgian wines. Now, great. okay. Right, yeah, I don't think here we are. That one. Yeah, now, here we go. Um, this, the, the noble art of sobriety, this is... Uh, you know, it's, it's a proper sobraging sword, and this is a way of if the cork is particularly recalcitrant. <laughs> Don't like being near Tom. Uh, with a, a huge uh, weapon here. With my, my massive the weapon. But look, you need camera. to find the um, the seam of the bottle. This is the key thing, and the seam is. <laughs> the bottle's made of plastic. Ah, here we go. Here we go. The seam is just here. This is where the bottle joins, and because the champagne bottle is made of effectively two parts, there's the brandy bottle bit, and then there's the top bit here, the, it logically goes, the weakest part of the bottle is the point at which the seam, which is just here, meets the cap. So what we do is we, we tickle, Hang on, let's get rid of all of this nonsense, uh, we, we, we tickle the seam, okay, where's that seam gone again, hang on. T Tom is stimulating the bottle right now, as, as we, Tom, as Tom often can't find the uh, seam, so to speak. <laughs> Emphasize it. It reminds me it's of so many... tickle the bottle and then ah, you attack it with a Exactly, chocolate. there we go. I, I've now... <laughs> I've, I've now found the, uh, the G-spot, and uh, therefore I'm going to, like all men, having you know, found out, I'm now going to really go for it. You know, <laughs> Mega, really no holes barred. You know, uh, okay. Right, here we go. So, okay, ready. Okay, tickle the bottle. Fuck. Here we go, people. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Are you okay? Fantastic! I've glass in my head! Cameraman's head's falling off! <laughs> and, and, and I closed my eye, thank God. Oh, no. And that is how you, um... It's not... Stand well back! <laughs> that, that's so not how we meant to do it. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> no. No, no, I think... No, no, it's fine. I think... I think we've all we've all come out of this oh, round. That was well. lucky. <laughs> we're, we're fine. Cheers. Okay. Well, we've, we've, we've all been. learned a lesson There's today. There's a lot of a lot, yeah. of, lot of a little bit of broken glass. No, no, no. There won't be. All the glass has gone okay. straight into Greg. Um, Cheers. Greg, you need change. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Mm. Oh, dear me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just cut it. That really. Um. <laughs> So we've called we've called the uh, ambulance for Greg. Yeah, and, um, uh, and now we better sort of. Uh, so we've got a, we've got a stand-in cameraman. Obviously, we just um, pierced the lungs of uh, of our of our normal cameraman Greg. Been doing a great job so far. You know, um, best wishes to his family. And uh, we're now going on to our final uh, wine of the day. Boo, perhaps you'll continue. Yeah. So this is it. It's late at night. I've gone back to my Georgian. Do they have dacas or something like that? I've managed to bludgeon someone over the head to bring them back home, but unfortunately I've left my corkscrew at uh, Tom's house. Mm. So I'm just going to try and find a way of opening it, and I noticed that I'm without any sort of sharp implement or, in fact, sword. But I'm lucky enough to pull a couple of years' worth of savings to buy myself a pair of shoes. In fact, some trickers. I bought myself a pair of loafers, which are particularly good when I'm ploughing the fields. So I'm now single-handedly going to try and open the wine with my shoe. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not staying for any more of this, okay? And I'm in the absence of safety goggles or any kind of safety um, measures at all. I'm I'm going. This is a true wine professional. I mean, she she knows when it's time to cut and run. And uh, well, Kate, thank you very much for your participation. You'll have to tread over my wire. Thank you for joining us. Um, you guys are totally insane. Anyway, right. Uh, we've lost Kate, but uh, you it's know, often happens to us. Actually, I know it does. It does. Uh, so, so, Boo, please, will you demonstrate how we? Uh... <laughs> now, this is something that's been uh, sort of hawked around the internet quite, uh, quite a lot recently. Um, we've seen someone uh, en français mm. uh, opening the bottle of wine. So, uh, we have no idea whether it works. That's the important thing. No, not been rehearsed. Uh, no. It's definitely not the wine chap way. Mm -mm. So, I think I'm going to go for the fireplace as the most, the hardest available area. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm just. <laughs> this be spectacular. So the whole building is going to come down there. Ah, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Mm. Okay. So, um, yeah. In the interest of research, I think first off, I'm just going to give her a nice little tap just to get the process started. <laughs> oh, poor John Tricker. Okay. Okay, so as you can see now, the wine is still well and truly not open, mm. which is just what I was the result yeah. of looking for early on. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to secure. Oh, 
I'm going to secure the uh, wine in the shoe, <laughs> find a hard surface, and I'm just going to start gently tapping away, first couple of light taps, and as you can see, <laughs> the fireplace is coming apart, and the, uh, <laughs> and the bottle, yeah, it's still not open, so the internet thing is obviously post-production, we'll put something in there. No, give it another go, seriously. Come on, come on now. Seriously, yeah. Mm. Ah! ah. <laughs> one more. Ah. <laughs> just doesn't work. Okay, so we've successfully proved, um, if you were in any doubt, that you cannot open a bottle of wine with, <laughs> with a shoe. I mean, I mean, honestly, some idiot would try that. Um, anyway, okay, good, uh, so, let's get back to our, um, up on the yeah. Georgia wines. Yeah, so, <laughs> Georgia wine. Anyway, we're back next week for another Vintelec series, I think. Yeah, something sensible. Okay, signing off for Wine Chat TV. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Get well good, soon, Greg. Good morning, yeah.